Welcome back, everyone. Robert Ferringo of Doc Sports here yet again with Nolan Patrick of Strike Point Sports, one of the top football handicappers in the country. Before we get to Nolan and talk about today's number seven team in my NFL power rankings, the Baltimore Ravens, we got to pay those bills, right? First, like and subscribe to this video. Subscribe to the Doc Sports YouTube channel. We are coming up on a monster football season, okay? You can get in-depth analysis and daily free plays. Every video that gets posted, you will be alerted so you can stay one step ahead of the sports books. Also, click on that link. You see the banner right above me here, free $60. Yeah, that link is down in the description. Click on it, take advantage, take $60, Use it to buy, let's say, Nolan Patrick of Strike Point Sports weekly football picks, win money, and then continue to rinse and repeat and do that whole thing until all of your dreams have come true. All right, Nolan, great to have you with us as always. Today we are talking Baltimore Ravens. I have them number seven. What do you think? Yes, no, too high, too low? Nope, I like it. I, I definitely don't think it's too low at all you know just quickly running through some teams yep 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 no i i like it i think this is i think this is a great spot for the ravens i think that they absolutely are a top 10 team in the nfl yeah over the last five years they have been one of the best teams in the afc which is clearly the superior conference they're one of the two top teams in the top division in football so i feel like this is pretty fair but all right so one of my favorite gifts jiff to send out in our in our football text thread with all of our friends at home when, when we're watching games on Sunday is that one of Lamar from Revenge of the Nerds with the with the floppy javelin for, for for Lamar Jackson every time he goes back to throw or everyone every time he just lets one loose that just doesn't look right so Lamar Jackson's the guy right he got his big contracts they have a new offensive system is this a good thing for, for for the Ravens moving forward? I do. I do. I think it's a good thing. You know, Lamar Jackson is, is he's brilliant when it comes to the game of football. He is so good at football. You know, take this with a grain of salt because Steve Young is, you know, I mean, he, he's out there sometimes. But Steve Young was quoted as saying that Lamar Jackson has the phys physical ability to be the greatest football player of all time and it's just that baltimore does not let him play to his full potential so now <laughs> do i agree with part of that yes i fully agree that baltimore doesn't really let him play to his fullest potential i don't think he's the greatest football player or has the ability to be the greatest football player but i love lamar jackson you know a long time ago i got into a debate with one of those friends that you had just talked about who was better michael vick or lamar jackson and the nostalgia in me wanted to say Michael Vick because I liked him so much. But when you just stop, I think Lamar Jackson is so good. And I think this is a great thing for Baltimore to do. They put their faith in him finally. And I think he's going to have a great season, possibly MVP caliber again. I do not. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm not going to rag on Lamar Jackson. I know there's some people out there that rag on him. I, I'm not ragging on him. He is. He's amazing. He is a fantastic football player, but he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Josh no. Allen. He's not Joe Burrow. So I don't know if tailoring their offense to get into shootouts with some of those other quarterbacks who are just better than him, I don't know if that's a good strategy. Baltimore has been one of the best teams in the NFL and in the AFC over the last four or five years. How have yes. they done that? They have done that by running the ball down people's goddamn throats and ripping their hearts out defensively. I like that. That's what Philadelphia did last year, and they won 14 games, made it to the Super Bowl, and should have beaten Kansas City. I kind of like sticking with that approach to football. Don't try and make Lamar Jackson be Patrick Mahomes or Joe Burrow. He's just not that guy. So you're a little bit higher on this offensive switch than I am. Um, okay, so they got your boy Odell Beckham Jr. They drafted Zay Flowers. They got him the new coordinator. Is this going to result in, like, just a 
Are you expecting the, this offense to just click and blow out from maybe not week one, but let's say after the first month, like is everything in place? Is this going to be one of the higher scoring teams in the AFC? Or do you think that people are kind of putting the cart before the horse here with, with how long it might turn take for everyone to get on the same page? No, I'm not. I really like Lamar Jackson. I like what he brings to the Baltimore offense. I don't, I know that uh, Todd Monken wants to open up this offense and he wants to get the ball downfield a little bit more. I still believe in this coaching staff and I still believe that they're going to open it up a bit more, but you're going to see a team closer to the 2021 Baltimore Ravens offense than you do than you did the 2022 Baltimore Ravens offense. In 2021, Baltimore had two receivers with over 1,000 yards. Mark Andrews was obviously one of them. He had 1,300-plus yards, and then Marquise Brown had just over 1,000 yards. And that Baltimore Ravens team as a whole was, I believe, top six or seven in the NFL in offense. They were a good offense in 2021. Again, like you said, because they ran the football very well that year you know, as a whole. So even in 2022, when I don't really feel like they had a very good offense at all, they were still 16. So they still had a mid-tier offense. I think you're going to see them go back to how they were in 2021. Top five or top six, top seven overall offense. They're still going to run the football, um, you know, because obviously Lamar Jackson brings that to the table. He's the kind of guy that could run for 1,000 yards himself. But I think that you're going to see them have an opportunity to have close to 2,100 yards pass catching between just two guys. Okay, you can't handicap injuries. We know this, right? Yeah. But we also know that there are some guys that are a little bit more prone to getting hurt than others. Jimmy Garoppolo. But <laughs> it, by – Lamar Jackson has missed a bunch of games. They're putting more on his plate by having him drop back to, to pass or maybe exposing him to, to some more hits. Do you th – how about this? Over or under Lamar Jackson starts this year, I'll put the number at 15 and a half. Are you going over or under? Oof. It's a good number. I would say he starts at least 15 games. I really like that number, 15 and a half. I think he starts yeah, at least 15 games. I'm a highly trained professional. I mean, of course, yeah, of yeah. course it's a – it's a good number that, that I put out there. All right. I know you're not a big totals better. You're not a big totals guy. I'm more of the totals guy. Again, value here with the Ravens. Are their totals going to maybe be set a little too high early in the season because of all this talk about the new, the new offense? That'll be weighted down by the defense, which we'll get to in a minute. Or do you think it'll go the other way? Do you think that the Ravens totals are going to be placed in those low to mid 40s ranges where they have been for years because they're more of a ground and pound defensive oriented team? And there might be some value if this offense clicks with them putting up some big numbers. I think that people are going to want to bet over in, in Ravens games early because of the additions, because that, you know, Lamar Jackson is back, paid, ready to go. You know, but week one, they play at home against Houston. You know, then week two, they go to Cincinnati. Could be an absolute dogfight like last year's playoffs. Week three, they play the Colts, who just stink. So, I mean, they could Baltimore could win that game 34-7 to and have it be under that total. Week four, they're at Cleveland. Again, not necessarily a game that's going to be just point after point after point. Week five, they're in a dogfight at Pittsburgh. So I think it's going to be really tough to just say Baltimore is going to score a ton of points in spots that there's really not a ton of points to be had early in the season. I think you're going to see some value if Baltimore doesn't play in higher scoring games that first five games. Well, week six, they, they play Tennessee in London, I believe. Um, so that could be another dud. But then following that, they get Detroit at home. They're at Arizona. They get Seattle at home, Cleveland at home, Cincinnati at home. So now they're back home a bit more to try to mm -hmm. score more points. So I think value might be had in weeks, you know, 7 to 11. 
as opposed to one through five or six. I think you're dead on with that. Now, to go into that Baltimore Ravens defense. Check out these numbers. All right. The Baltimore Ravens have fielded 18 top 10 scoring defenses and 18 top 10 total defenses over the last 24 years. So three out of every four years, they have a top 10 total defense or scoring defense. They've been in the top five in points allowed for the past five seasons and in the top six in points allowed 15 times over the last 24 years. That's insanity. Do, do, yeah. do we just... Is it kind of like the Steelers where we just, it doesn't matter who the players are. It doesn't matter who the names are. We just kind of pencil in that the Baltimore Ravens are going to have a top six defense this year. Or do you think that by changing the nature of their offense, they're also going to be putting their defense in a little bit tougher position and that maybe the numbers won't be as, as good on that side of the ball. The changing of the offense is one thing that concerns me because when you tend to open your offense up a little bit more and take more chances, that brings more three and outs into play. You know, and when Baltimore was running the football and had a conservative offense, it gave those defensive, those very, very good defensive players time to rest. But overall, you know, Baltimore was, they were a good defense last year, but the second half of last year is where they really took shape. I think that if they would have con continued along the path that they were on early, they wouldn't have been as good a defense. And that would have been one of, I mean, I, the worst Baltimore defenses we've seen, you know, but that's saying something. But then they went and traded for Roquan Smith. You know, defensive coordinator Mike McDonald got a lot more comfortable with what they were doing. You, so they were much better. You know, they played a, a very, very good Cincinnati Bengals team in the playoffs and nearly won that game because of just how good their defense had gotten the second half of the season. They're going to be good regardless of what the offense does. You know, they've got a guy a guy that I just love to watch play football and Rock Yasin. I love that guy. You know, I think he's going to take over well for an aging and, and banged up Marcus Peters. You know, adding guys like Trenton Simpson and Tavius Robinson, they're going to be good again. Just – Good again. Okay. How good, though? Where do, where do you put them in the hierarchy of the AFC North going into the season? Are they the best team? Are they better than Cincinnati? Cincinnati, a lot of changes on that defense, right? They lost four of their top six in the secondary, both starting safeties, turning over the offensive line again, Joe Burrow dealing with calf injury, Going into the season, is Baltimore the best team in the in the AFC North, or do the Bengals still get they still get the benefit of the doubt? I like the Bengals. I think the Bengals are the best team in the North. I think the Ravens are the second best team in the North, and I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are the third best team in the North. I think it's all very close. <clears throat> you know, it could be eleven wins, ten wins, nine wins. You know, or 10 wins, 10 wins, 9 wins, and then one team just has, you know, a tiebreaker. But I think Cincinnati is the team to beat in this division. And this total, you know, as we talked about in the Pittsburgh video, how we just said, I love the over, even if it's just by half a, half a win. You know, I love 9 wins for Pittsburgh on, you know, an 8.5 point line. The Ravens, I've seen anywhere from nine and a half to ten and a half. I believe for the sake of this video, we're pretty much saying ten and a half. Eleven is tough. This could be the line that I say to people, yeah, don't bet it. Don't bet it. They're they're gonna be they're gonna have ten or eleven wins. I don't see Baltimore getting to twelve wins. I think it's absolutely gonna be ten and seven or eleven and six. So I would say over they're gonna have 11 wins okay if i had to play it I, you're right shop around and find that nine and a half if you can find that nine and yeah. a half i take it over if it's ten and a half i'm gonna err on the other side and again i think our feelings about this win total kind of reflect our feelings about the changes in the offense i'll believe it when i see it that that this was a good decision and putting the ball 
in his hands as a passer is going to help keep him healthy and help generate more offense and not, you know, hurt that, hurt that defense. If I'm wrong about it, I'm wrong about it, but he's got to kind of prove it to me. So you'll take the over. I will take the under one last question before I let you out of here though. Okay. Cause I want this on the record. Will Lamar Jackson ever go to a Super Bowl? Not he doesn't even have to win the Super Bowl. Will Lamar Jackson ever go to a Super Bowl? Not while Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow are playing football. And Josh Allen. Yeah. yeah. Right? He's <laughs> I know. Does he gotta go to the NFC? Like he should he should have <laughs> left. Lamar Jackson should have not signed his contract. He should have left. He should have gone and signed with San Francisco. But yeah. on that, yeah. then he'd make it to his Super Bowl. So then he could. All yeah. right. So he's Nolan Patrick of Strike Point Sports. I am Robert Faringo. We are Doc Sports. Carpe diem and good luck.